So welcome to another video. I don't uh, normally do valve radiograms. But this is one which we've bought in and it's a demonstration for somebody specific and if you see that's an HMV 1628. So we've taken the chassis out. It is actually in my living room right now. There's no workshop room. And we've started cleaning up the Garrard RC120 Mark II turntable. And I don't know whether it's light enough to see the 8 inch speaker only just in there. So what we're going to do is change all the capacitors on this. This is an eBay purchase. In fact, look, there's the valve chart just there. If it'll focus on that. Let's move that out of the way. So what we have got is the service manual. And I've been busy blowing up the service manual. And you'll see that it's actually the HMV 1344 table radio. And this is, I say, the 1628 radiogram. So I've got all the information here. Now this says, here's the anomaly. This says it's fitted with a Calaro Challenger record turntable. And this one's fitted with this Garrard RC120. So I'm glad it is. So what we're going to do is going to go in the workshop and Mr C is going to be changing some of the capacitors which we now need changing on this chassis. Okay, so we've got the chassis as you can see on the bench now. And the first thing we're going to do is to change the three capacitors which are in the can, the can which is just there, which is capacitors 47, 55 and 56. 47 is 30 microfarads, sorry the air conditioner's just come on in here. And we'll be replacing that with... Mr Chippy's turning off the air conditioner. We'll be replacing the 30 microfarads with 33. Sorry, it's 32 and we're replacing it with 33. And then, with the other two capacitors are 40 microfarads each and we'll be changing those for 47 microfarads. We're just gonna tag them on the bottom because the modern components are so small. And we're putting 350 volt rated items in which have come from RS components. So we'll just pause the video and then we will take that action. So as you can see, we've now changed some of these electrolytics. Uh, Mr Chippy's changed those three there, 47, 47 and 33, uh, which replaced the, the multi-can electrolytic. We've replaced that one there and that little one there. And what we're going to do, I'm going to have to order them in though, later on is to change that one, I don't like the look of, that black one, the black hunts one there and one there. I hadn't taken that into consideration because I didn't know they were that make or that style until we'd taken delivery of the product. Now the vendor said that this worked until 10 years ago and they had an engineer out and he said it was the, mains, the main output capacitor. Now that could well be on the, on the um, audio transformer on the other side, on the output transformer. So we've changed that as a precaution that the one we took off did test OK. The vendor may have misheard him, but we've changed it anyway as a precaution. So I've lubricated all the drive. So I have lubricated all the drive cord. And so we've cleaned all the controls with service all. And we're going to be plugging it in shortly when I've popped the valves back in. There's five valves. The HT rectifier is solid state on this, it was a selenium unit. I'm going to put the valves back, we're going to quickly do some voltage checks to make sure nothing's stupid and then see what happens. So I'm going to turn it over and just let you have a look at the other side. So there's the other side. The now defunct multi-capacitor there, we don't take them out, may as well leave them in for people to look at in the future. Mains transformer, valve holders, tuning coils, and the VHF tuner unit. So we're going to pop those valves back in. So here we are with the valves back in. 
valve one, which is on the VHF tuner, is ECC85. Valve two is ECH81. Valve three, EF89. Valve four, EABC80. And then the output valve is EL84. So I did blow ups of the service manual so we could follow this a bit more easily. And now, oh incidentally, they all seem to be original valves those, they're all mullard and uh, I've got a valve tester and I will just pop them onto the valve tester later and we'll just make sure the emissions are within uh, what's acceptable. We're not expecting any valve problems, but you never know and I'm now going to power it up. Right, so we're in grand position and with an input from the little pocket signal generator there, you're hearing the one kilohertz tone. Just to prove it, we'll turn it to 800 and up to 1200. So that's the signal generator. So the amplifier is now working on this, which of course is what wasn't working 10 years ago when the vendor owned it and it last worked. So everything looks normal. And the next thing we're going to do, having checked the gram input and therefore checking the amplifier, is to check the radio. Just to show you the volume. It's one of these which is on-off volume tone. No, sorry, on-off tone rather than on-off volume. So just to confuse me, that's how it is. Right, we're going to radio mode. So as you can hear, the radio is now working on... FM, we've just got it on a bit of wire, and I'll tell you in a moment when I the volume now. Right, so what was stopping the radio from working was well, you know, bringing the amplifier back to operation was simply a matter of changing the capacitors, which were obvious the electrolytic capacitors and uh, we changed the um, the small value one on the output transformer. Um, I also found we've had to clean the wave change switch properly. I've got in there with a the fiberglass brush that we have and so that's working. And there were three resistors 47k feeding valve, let's have a look valve number four which is the EABC80 I noticed it was uh, quite cold to touch obviously it was lit up the heaters were working but it looked like there was no high tension there wasn't and it turned out that the 47k HD feed resistor was um, was open circuit so that restored power onto that valve and then moving across to the next valve, valve 3 and valve 3 is just there in the circuit um, low high tension on pin 9 there's a 47k feed resistor which was 118k so that got changed then it still didn't work and so we moved across to the other circuit diagram which is the radio side of it on this service sheet and I found that on pin 6 I think it is the, no it wasn't 6, that was alright it was this one again, pin 1 you've got a 47k resistor again and that was high, let's change that still wasn't working on radio and that 27k resistor there had also gone high so all the power feed ones seemed to have gone high and straight away that then brought their FM so I haven't had to touch anything in the FM tuning which is lucky because it's in a, its own little box so four resistors later and that's brought back operation so what we'll now do is I'm going to um, take that back into the cabinet and we will overhaul the turntable.
so I'll do that with you on the next video. So thanks for watching so far. This is the HMV 1628, which looks to me like it's going to be living again. Thanks for watching.